All right, guys, so today we're gonna to be tying a Buford. Uh, it's a pretty common pattern for muskies, probably one of the most common patterns to tie. So I figured we'd start out in this little tying series with probably one of the more basic um, ties. Today, we're gonna to be using a Partridge 6 aught Albertine hook, followed by a trailer hook. I'm not too for sure on the brand. I believe it's Gamagatsu, but I uh, really like these trailer hooks. Personally, I don't like a lot of shanks behind, and I like this is a really good hookup uh, percentage hook that I really enjoy. Follow that up, we're gonna be using some 55 pound not too kinky wire to attach these two. Followed up with some beads. Um, we're gonna be using some super glue. Uh, your basic scissors, these are my trimming scissors, and these are my uh, bucktail scissors, as well as probably want some wire cutters to adjust the wire. Uh, today we're going to be using some Vivas GSP, the 200. Uh, anytime you're tying with bucktail, you definitely want a hair pusher to push that bucktail back to reverse tie or to just get it out of the way to wrap your thread and have a nice clean fly. Uh, I'm tying this on a Renzetti vise. And the materials that we're using today for the bucktail, we're going to have some hot orange bucktail, uh, some black bucktail, uh, a little bit of brown bucktail as well, give it more of a darker uh, presentation. And this belly hair. Uh, this stuff is gonna be, this is great for spinning, which we're gonna be using on the head. Um, for the feathers we're using, today we're using some white and schlappen in the black and orange, uh, as well as some longer saddles, skinnier saddles. And some woolly bugger saddle in black. So that's it for the materials. Um, yeah, we're gonna get started with putting down a good thread base. All right, so we got the thread base. I personally like to go about two, three times. Should get good enough. Followed up by a half hitch. Just for extra security. And you wanna trim off this. Most of you guys know how to. I have some very dull scissors. Now we're gonna start with these schloppins. Okay, so we got these uh, orange and black schloppins. Yeah, these are some really good feathers actually. Uh, honestly, you guys can pick out whatever you feel is right. I mean, there's really no magic number. I just like to grab probably two, three of them or four of them that are roughly the same size and same like, length and uh, profile wise. So these two are pretty similar. We'll tie these ones in first. This is just how I like to do it. Obviously, I'm not an expert by any means, but this pattern has produced quite a few fish in uh, recent years. Pretty common one. There's that first one tied down. Definitely make sure these guys are even. This good enough. Loose wrap. I'm a big fan of doing tight wraps, keeping thread pressure. Once you lose that momentum and do what I like. Okay, so we got two of these feathers right here. Now this fly is probably gonna have quite a few feathers, so I Usually I like to limit my musky flies to maybe six to eight feathers, four to eight feathers I'd say, per fly, just cause you just don't need that many. I'm gonna start out with this half saddle. So we're probably gonna pull out four of these guys. Yeah, there's really no really right or wrong way how you put your feathers in. I kinda like to taper and do my longer ones first and then progressively work your way up some of the shorter ones. So basically I like, when I do my trailer like this, it's mainly gonna be my feathers and flash and a little bit of bucktail. Just cause I like to have that back hook as more of lesser, like the tapering one. And not one that's just overcrowded with a bunch of material. That's in my opinion. Yeah, we're just gonna go two of these. Bear with me, this 
is my first uh, tying video on this little series we're gonna try to do. Yeah, get yourself a good bobbin that's not duct taped. Like this one, where she slips. That's no fun. Okay, so we got this nice feather base down here. I'm gonna grab some of this bucket out of the way here. We're gonna come in with our two black feathers. Flat day, we aren't putting any flash in basically because I don't have any flash that matches this. Uh, in my recent pat or my past patterns with this, I would tie with a dark crystal flash that actually worked really nice. It looked good with the black bucktail, and it wasn't too much. Personally, I don't like putting a lot of flash, I don't like overdoing it, but I think flash is needed when you're doing musky flies. All right. I'm going to tie some bucktail in right about here. I'm going to start this off with some black bucktail. And really, you can start out with orange bucktail. A little bit of brown, it really doesn't matter a whole lot. But a nice little sparse clump in here. Now, you could forward tie this or reverse tie this. I personally am just going to reverse tie it. I usually reverse tie on my buck tie. I rarely forward tie. Especially when you have good buck tail, you can really manipulate that on how you want. Now, I personally do not trim the butts on these because I believe that it builds more of a profile. But you do whatever you want to do, basically. Way to tie flies. If a muskie sees it, you either want it or don't want it. So, for my flies, I like to go like this. I don't know, that's just a personal one. Some of my flies, I'll go like that. Some of them I won't, just depending on the situation. I don't really like doing thread dams that much, but I will do a little bump in front of that just so she locks in place and I'll tie in another piece right there. Oh my god, a big bucktail. Yeah, I preferably when I'm tying, you know, a bigger musky fly, I don't like to use the super long good fibers right away in the tail section just because tail section is meant to be tapered anyways and you don't need those really big flaring um, hairs right away in the beginning. You need those towards the front of the fly to give it a good taper which is why I wait to use those. So I'm using kind of the, this is a brand new bucktail so all the fibers are pretty nice and you can really manipulate it on what you want but um, yeah. I like to save those. Nice and clean. Also cute. 
here. That's kind of what I want it because then that flies. The maximum height that it's going to get once you put that front hook could be right about there. So that's perfect. I'm going to keep it working up. Okay, now the next color. Do a little bit of brown. I don't usually like to put a whole lot of brown. Um, usually the best color for this is more like a burnt, darker orange kind of. Um, wow, all these fibers are really good. So I don't like to put, I'll put it every so often, just to give it a little darker um, color tone compared to that hot orange. To kind of even with that black a little bit. Like I said, I don't cut these butts just because I think it builds profile. Um, obviously, you're adding in, you know, a little bit more floatingness. Bucktail likes to be very buoyant, but I don't know. You put it on a sinking line, it doesn't matter, in my opinion. Probably wrong, but whatever. So take some time to really peel the fibers back. I'd like to kind of put some flash too to kind of finish out the fly, the back half of it. Yeah, so that's that front half. In total, this fly, once you start getting good at it, should take you probably around hour 15, hour. Right now we're rolling pretty fast. Once you have good materials, you know, you don't really have to worry about finding the best fibers. If you got brand new stuff, you can just really pick from anywhere and really manipulate it and figure out what you want. But we're just gonna put half hitches in here. That's all what I do. I haven't had a problem with it in the last four years. Put enough super glue on there. Make sure she's nice and cinched. You use head cement too. I've used both super glue and head cement. And I like to put, remember you have those, if you do it like how I'm doing it, you do have wraps on top of that deer hair. I like to just kind of go all around, a little bit on the bottom there where I cut that thread. Yeah, that's about really all that you need. You don't need a whole lot of super glue. So that is the back half of this Buford fly. Let that ore sit there to dry. We're gonna put our six aught partridge hook. Get that nice and in there. Again, nice thread base. I like to do a little bit more when I'm connecting the wire on this. And I like to go all the way right in line with the barb opposed to some people going up here. That's just my personal preference. I like to wrap back once and twice. So a total of three times wrapping on the shank. Okay. My scissors are so dull. Okay, so now we're gonna wrap our wire. Basically how I do it is I tie it on the side, the side that's closest to me, and then when I wrap it back over, I tie it on top. Saw a video on it, it's worked for me. I like to tie it, I don't know, maybe three quarters, more than three quarters up the shank, just for security reasons. I do a couple loose wraps just to kind of get it where I want it. So you can kind of still manipulate it. Once you got where you want it. So there, when you cut the wire, it's gonna be sharp there at the end. So I like to go right in front of it and do like a little thread dam there. And once I got that edge covered where I'm not gonna cut my thread, that's when I really start wrenching on it and start going right next to each other on every wrap. So you can't really see it too much from the camera view, but on this side, I am wrapping it 
really close to each other because this is a very crucial part uh, in the musky fly because more likely the back hook will be hooked in the fish's mouth no matter what just because it's a stinger so we definitely do not want that to come loose so usually I don't like creating a lot of separation between the two hooks so I don't really like having it this far back because you have all that space I like it having almost like about that when you have too much space it creates a void in there and it doesn't my personal opinion it kind of makes it look not as natural so usually I go two beads or one bead sometimes I go no beads depending on how big the fly is but this one is gonna be a pretty big fly so we'll go two beads put those beads right through there wraps to manipulate it that's how I want it and really close tight wraps don't really want to mess this part up because then that's a lot of unwrapping you need to do with your thread and especially after you super glue it it's a lot to deal with so make sure you do it right you never really spend too much time on this part a very crucial part in the fly you do not want that coming undone not for your sake but for the fish's sake too don't really want half a fly stuck in a fish's mouth so head cement super glue super glue dries a little faster than the head cement in my opinion you just do enough basically on that part too a couple wraps just to kind of get that all cinched in a couple more wraps back brush that all on there yeah that is dried that is not coming out okay so we're gonna go back to black now here's where you start using kind of your um, longer fibers I would say so we're gonna look on here this little chunk should do most of you guys that are tying this fly probably know not to use more than a pencil's worth of bucktail, I would say. That's my opinion. It gets really hard to cinch down, and then you have loose fibers on your fly, and that's how things fall apart. You get those under hairs out of there. Personally, I don't really care about it. I just tie it, and if they come out, they come out. They're small. But I try to get as much as I can. I like to come out right about there, because I like to incorporate. You're going to tie the butts. You tie it right back there, it's gonna be all up in there. I like to tie it right about there. That way those butts are not gonna have any way, any interaction with how the fly will move in water. Come back. Right there. I like to flare that out quite a bit. kind of tricky getting all that hair to get back there this is one of the more crucial parts setting that first stack of bucktail after the articulation because if you go too much it doesn't really tape around if you go like this you got that space there so it's really kind of important So 
like one of these parts this is where I'll do a thread dam just because sometimes flaring that out with how I sometimes do it won't work so like that it looks good Okay, next step, we're gonna use some orange bucktail now. Not that close, it's going. Right about there. Jeez, that's really sloppy. Yeah, make sure your butts are lined up. It really it doesn't matter the most. It definitely helps. When you're spinning that, make sure you get the thread tension. Oh, cinch. I like to kind of get into those butts too and flare those out a little bit more. Yeah, that's looking like a really good taper right now. You know, you kind of look at it, and there's a lot of orange going on, so kind of what I'll do on some flies is kind of taper it out to do more of a black because you're going to have a black head, which is going to take up roughly that much space. So you probably got about two more worth, two more clumps of bucktail until uh, you start working on the head. So we'll kind of discuss that more as we go on, but yeah, so far I'd say the profile on this is looking really good. Profile is everything in my opinion. Okay, up next we're gonna do a little bit of brown in here. Not too much, less than what we normally do. Just to kind of, don't want that brown to overpower the main color scheme of this fly. black and orange yeah this color pattern has worked for the last like two or three years for me it's a very common black and orange it's a very common pattern but it's probably one of the most productive flies especially on sunny days it really stands out Okay, so now we're gonna start working on our black tail. Tying those butts so they flare out more. If you're familiar with the Buford head, that's basically what the head will look like, except in bigger form. It's all flaring out like that. Yeah, I like to have more... My orange and black flies, I like to have more black than orange, per se. But you do you. There's no magic fly. Having a pedestal on your vise that's really heavy to kind of
it's all even how you like it. Yeah, these Bufords take up a lot of bucktail. So, don't be afraid of it. So I kind of set up my last clump of bucktail before the head kind of facing up instead of all the way down because when you put in your Buford head and you start trimming it, there's going to kind of be a separation between a really fat head like this and if your hair is down like this. That's why I like to keep it up so it all kind of meets and there's not a void in between the head and the last clump of bucktail that you use. Okay. body hair you can uh, you can use you know the butts of these two but uh i just found this in the shop so i figured this would be really easy this is the easy way to tie the buford so i just put on the first section of head using this body hair stuff this stuff is really good for spinning compared to i don't know how i think of it is all this stuff is really short which is good for heads why waste this really good long stuff on a head when you're gonna cut it, and you can just use it for the body. So it's like, pick up some of this body hair stuff, super easy. So I just put on a clump of body hair right here, spun it, like how you normally spin your hair, but I'll show you how we do the second part of it, which is basically the same part as this. And then I brought my thread up to the front here. I don't know if you can really see that. Get that in front, because that makes that head just stick straight up vertically. So now, I'm gonna get some more of this stuff. You know, this stuff you can use a little bit more than pencil with because it's really good at spinning. It's really light and hollow, which makes it really nice to spin. So you can kind of get away with more than you would like a coming off the bucktail itself. So that's how I put it on like that. One loose wrap, oh, two loose wrap. Spin, pull. I like to go like a slack and then go like this. And you gotta, with bucktail, you gotta intertwine this stuff. You gotta, can't just wrap it all at once. You gotta wiggle, weave your way through in there. This is pretty secure. Now, if you fish this fly on an intermediate line, you're gonna have a problem because it's all bucktail, which means it will want to float almost. So, unless you wanna sit there and wait for it to sink for a long time, go ahead, but I'm running um, Sonar Titan um, Sink 7, 5, and 3, which is perfect for this fly. You can even go with a 9 if you're in a lake. So that's how you want that. And these stragglers, you're going to be trimming all this to make it more presentable, I should say. Get rid of some of those hairs. Now you can go about one more clump. If you're not comfortable with putting on another clump here, um, then don't worry about it. Just end the fly like that. You should be good. But I. There's a little clump that didn't spin right here, so no worries. You don't need much if you're filling in little patches. Just a little bit. Right about there.
pull these hairs back like you've been doing. Get a nice one wrap on there to start out and then really start to get right up close to that hair. This is gonna make that, get that Buford head um, to really stay vertical. Your nice clean head on this fly. thread but I like to glue it after I'm done trimming so when I trim I like using um, bigger style of scissors just because I feel like the small one you start going like that this one I can just do you know, one nice clean cut so what you want to do is pluck out get this as nice and tall as you can it's really up to you how you want your head to look just basically a big oval head so I guess do your best to see how you want it don't cut too much off because then you won't be able to get it back which I have done numerous times head is what makes a great fly a good fly turn into a great fly So you trim it up a little bit, kind of see what you're looking at. And I'm just, I'm looking at it, I'm just a little sloppy, so come in here a little bit more, a little bit more trimming. It's gonna be hard to capture on camera just because I'm rotating it so much. at this right this side's a little bit more oblique on that side so we're going to trim that up just a little bit more part of tying the fly just because if you mess up on a cut you aren't getting it back okay that's kind of like how I like my heads nice and thick really will push a lot of water I'm going through you can always you know you test out the fly and it turns out where it's too buoyant almost you can always take some hair off of there, you know, it's not going to make that big of a deal. The way it looks, every... Yeah, there's a couple of hairs. 
there's air that I don't really like, so trim that up. Be careful, also another tip, be careful not to cut into that last piece of bucktail that you tied on, which is that brown stuff, which I was saying earlier. Otherwise, it's gonna just create a non, you know, this is your tallest part of the fly almost. This is brown stuff, so you cut that, you know, it leaves you with that stuff, and it kinda doesn't give you that uniform bait fish pattern, sil silhouette, I should say. More or less smaller head to a very broad, you know, top of the fish, and then moving down. So yeah, this is uh, about it for the fly. We're just gonna put on some glue. black and orange Buford, an XL edition.